Hello student, I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head, Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwadale, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today I am going to present a lecture of BSc first semester on the unit Introduction to Forensic Science and the topic Forensic Science Experts, which has been jointly prepared by myself and Mr. Rajendra Prasad Pawar, a PhD scholar and a UGC SRF at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwadale, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. So let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. In today's lecture, Module 1 will be as usual, the introduction. Module 2, Duties of a Forensic Scientist. Module 3 will deal about the ethics of a forensic scientist. Module 4 will be the qualification of a forensic scientist. Module 5 will be report writing by a forensic scientist. And finally, Module 6 will be our conclusion. So my dear friend, a forensic scientist is first a scientific expert. When a scientist's knowledge is used to help the lawyers, juries or the judges at the court of law to understand the result of a scientific test, the scientist becomes a forensic scientist. M. J. B. Orfila, Albert Osborne, Francis Galton, Gene Services Stats and Edmund Locard are some of the renowned forensic scientists who contributed a lot in the field of forensic science. So, forensic science is a vital tool in the search for the truth in any legal proceeding. In criminal matters, scientific analysis conducted by a qualified forensic scientist can exonerate as well as convict and accused. In civil cases such as a lawsuit from damages from arson or from a mass disaster by lethal weapon, testing and analysis by a qualified forensic scientist may be used by either side to address the validity of the allegations in that particular suit. Regardless of the type of legal proceeding or which side uses scientific evidence, the forensic scientist must be able to write a report and testify under the oath about the following matters. What fact or items of evidences were analyzed? What test or analytical tools and techniques were used? How valid or reliable these tests or the analysis have been found to be by the other courts? Why and how the forensic scientist was qualified to conduct these tests? What was the results of the test of the experiments were? And how these results are relevant to the issue of dispute. By now you must have known what are the duties of forensic scientists should be. The forensic scientist must be accurate, methodological, detailed and above all unbiased because the work of a forensic scientist is intended to be used in the court and scientific evidence and can be very powerful. The ability to keep detailed notes and to write clear, concise and accurate reports is vital. The forensic scientist must be able to determine which fact or items of evidence are relevant. In most cases, that easy, the items or the items are provided to the forensic scientist for examination and analysis. In other case, the forensic scientist may need to personally go to the scene of crime to conduct an on-site analysis, collect evidences or document facts for later analysis. Have been provided or gathered the relevant information, the forensic scientist then has to decide which examination, test or analytical protocol are suitable and relevant to that particular issue in dispute. Then, the forensic scientist must conduct the most appropriate test or analysis and document the process. Afterward, the forensic scientist must interpret the result and write a clear, concise report documenting the steps followed to reach the conclusion or opinion of the forensic scientist. The forensic scientist will, at some point of time, have to testify. Testimony is the verbal statement of a witness under the oath to the jury or the judge. 
Forensic scientists are expert witness as opposed to ordinary witnesses. Expert witness are permitted to testify not just about the results of analysis were, but also to give an opinion about what those results mean. For example, a forensic scientist may testify about the observed factual result of DNA profiling or entomological examination and that in their expert opinion the result show that the tested exhibits belong to the suspect or the victim or this is the real time of death. It is significant to mention that there are various different kind of normatives, behavioral, codes that are recognized within scientific community and we need to separate them from one another, yet though they are connected. Likewise, there are some ethics which should be followed by every forensic scientist. A forensic scientist should always remain truthful and accountable to justice to nothing else but to justice, since it is a court that pronounces its conviction or acquittal after considering and examine all aspects. Thus, forensic scientists should always help and facilitate the justice through court. Next, a forensic scientist should always form its independent opinion without any prejudice or by as towards accused or the police. A forensic scientist should not care whether his report is going in favor of police or accused or against anyone else. Next is a forensic scientist should honestly and scientifically analyze the physical evidences and infer its opinion on the basis of established scientific principle and facts. A forensic scientist must use all possible scientific methods to confirm the result obtained by a particular method. He should maintain proper records of his or her scientific analysis and should form his or her final opinion by critically analyzing all the results. Such scientific records may be presented to the court if required. A forensic scientist should never accept any allurement of any kind from anybody for tendering his or her opinion. To qualify as an expert witness, the forensic scientist must have a solid documented background of education, training and experience in the scientific discipline used to conduct the examination, testing or analyze about which the forensic scientist wants to testify. Sometime in the court of law, the work or the qualification of the forensic scientist are challenged. A party to a court case may challenge whether the scientist performs the test correctly or not, whether the scientist interpreted the results accurately or not, or whether the underlying science is valid and reliable. Finally, a party to a court case may challenge whether the scientist is properly qualified to render an expert opinion or question the scientist's impartiality for working as a forensic scientist in any forensic science laboratory in india a person should be qualified as detailed as mentioned below serial number name of the post essential qualification and experience so we start we start with the scientific officer in physics division he should he or she should be msc second class as they say in physics or computer science or masters of computer application or in forensic science with specialization in forensic physics or forensic ballistics and should have physics and chemistry as a subject in BSc. Now we talk about experience should have two year experience of scientific research from any authorized college institute laboratory, university or any other academic institution. So these are the experience. Next, we come to scientific officer chemistry. He or she should be masters in second class in chemistry or in forensic science with specialization in forensic chemistry or forensic toxicology. Two years of experience 
of scientific research from any authorized college, institute, laboratory, university or any other academic institute. Now we come to the third point is the scientific officer biology. MSc in botany or zoology or biochemistry or microbiology or biotechnology or genetics or in forensic science with specialization in forensic biology or forensic zoology and should have botany, zoology and chemistry as a subject in BSc or graduation level with two years experience of scientific research from any authorized institute, laboratory or any other academic institute or two years experience which is desirable as essential qualification had been re revised from time to time by the responsible authority and relaxation has been given to the candidates having forensic science degree in MSc and all such. And for other candidates the desirable experience remained the same or as revised by the commission of the examination authority. In some states like the state of Tamil Nadu, for Tamil Nadu Public Service Commission, the preference is always given to the candidate having master's degree in forensic science. An expert report is issued on a standard pattern. The form provides for all the essential details that is the laboratory, case and the report number letter number and the letter number with date, the date and mode of the receipt, the description of the packages, their numbers, identification mark, seal and signature, the description of the exhibits, the questionnaire in brief, the date on which the analysis has been performed and completed, the analysis report, observations and the result, the name and designation of the examiner, mode of the dispatch of the report and exhibit, the concise information to be given in the report but sufficient to be ineligible which provides the result. As the report are to be utilized by the non-technical, basically we can say layman, in most of the cases now in absence of expert under section 293 of Criminal Procedure Code 1974, they are expressed in a simpler language. The wordings of the final result should be standardized and simple. They should not be duplication of the same word. The inference or the result should be whitened in a clear text and can be italic, bold, uppercase or underlined. The report should be illustrated with experimental data photographs, illustration and with the sketches wherever necessary and required. The conclusion form the most important part of these reports. There might be definite, indefinite or no conclusion. The definite report should be given only when sufficient evidences are discovered for the linkage or delinkage. Currently inconclusive reports has no importance. The importance to be given is to the an inconclusive report varies from one report to another. One report may be inconclusive on the technical basis while the evidences may be obligatory and the data may hardly cross the realm of possibility. It is the duty of the court to ascertain the value of the given report. The report should be sent as soon as possible. The proverb here is justified. Justice delayed is justice denied is literally true in some cases. All the examinations should be carried out properly in a scientific manner and the report should be made only on the observations and the final inference because the expert evidence is said to be technical in nature. Expert is a person who knows more and more about less and everything about nothing. Indian Evidence Act 1872 Section 45 and Criminal Procedure Code 1974 Section 291 to 293 defines and explain about the expert witness.
As we know that the world has changing in a very fast pace, likewise the crime rate and the criminal activity are changing accordingly. Hence, for investigating and solving modern crimes, a forensic scientist must be skilled in applying the principles and techniques of the physical and natural science to the analysis of the many type of evidence that may be recovered or obtained during an investigation. Procedures and techniques used in the laboratories must not only rely on firm science but must also be admissible in the court. The Fire versus United States decision set guidelines for determining the admissibility of scientific evidence into a courtroom. To meet the Fire standard, the evidences in question must be generally accepted by the scientific community. Some courts don't rely on general acceptance as an absolute prerequisite for acceptance of evidence. The Federal Rule of Evidence Rule 702 repeat, Rule of Evidence Rule 702 is specified that one. The testimony is based upon scientific facts of data. Second, the testimony is the product of reliable principle and methods. And finally, third, the witness has applied the principle and methods of reliably to the fact in the case. However, in the 1993 case of Daubert versus Merrill Dow, Pharmaceutical Incorporation, the US Supreme Court asserted that the FIRE standard is not an absolute prerequisite to the admissibility of scientific evidence. Finally, the trial judge were said to be ultimately responsible as gatekeepers for the admissibility and validity of scientific evidence presented in the courtroom as well as an expert testimony. So with all this information here, we come to the end of today's informative lecture. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Professor Devashish Bose signing off for today. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQs, quizzes and LORs at www.cec.nic.in. Till then, goodbye.